Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture in our eco-hydrology course. This is Professor Juan Manuel Diaz Hernández and I am recording this lesson from University of Valladolid in Spain. I have a PhD background in the areas of eco-hydraulics and also have experience in in-scene flow studies and environmental flow management plans with adaptive approach. I am from Spain and have carried out many e-flows studies in Spain and for new projects in South America, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Argentina and Central America, Guatemala and Panama like in the photo of a recent hydropower project in Panama. Today I'm going to talk about a key point in the area of river conservation and restoration that is the environmental flows or e-flows. This short uh, lecture goes through the application of one standard methodology for e-flows assessment known with the acronym IFIM which is the in-stream flow incremental methodology. A good definition of environmental flows or e-flows was suggested in the Brisbane Declaration within the 10th International River Symposium in Australia 2007. E-flows consider the quantity, timing and quality of water flows required to sustain freshwater ecosystem including the biota and also the population interest that depend on the river. In Spain, as you sure know, we have a lot of experience in altering the natural river flows. In fact, our country is among the top 10 countries in the world in terms of number of dams, with more than 1,200 projects. In Europe, environmental regulation concerning the e-flows is the Water Framework Directive and the term that has been officially adopted in Europe is ecological flows. In the slide you see the cover front of the guidance document. E-flows are aimed to achieve a good ecological condition in natural surface water bodies. E flows are also respected by the environmental policies of the project's uh, lenders, I mean the banks and corporations that lend money to finance the construction of hydraulic projects such as dams for irrigation, hydropower, and so on. A premise for river conservation is that the natural flow regime incorporates key components that keeps a good ecological condition in terms of extractor composition and functioning. This is a typical hydrologic year with daily flows from January to December. During the first months of summer, the discharges are low. The hydraulic conditions in the channel are shallow and slow, and this is favorable for the growth of fish. Then a small flood occurs. It's a small, I mean the water does not overflow the channel but with enough power to remove the accumulated sediment on the river bed during the previous months. This mechanism of bed maintenance is termed surface flushing. Next comes the winter with high flows and the deep and fast hydraulic conditions in the channel are favorable, in this case for the reproduction of fish. In general the low flow period is the most sensitive to a flow reduction.
The first methods to compute if flows were developed during the 60s and 70s with relatively simple hydrological and hydraulic approaches and they have been improved to the best today that is the holistic or incremental methods. The most used methodology of this type in the world is the in-stream flow incremental methodology known by the acronym IFIM. IFIM is considered as one standard of best practices in this matter by the International Bank Administration and the Academy. This methodology has the ability to integrate the results of complementary models such as hydraulic physical habitat, hydrology, population dynamics and water quality, temperature, oxygen, etc. This dense slide is just to show you that IFIM is a complete process that involves social analysis, hydrology, hydraulics, biology and final decision-making process. Now, let's see how and if IFIM study is carried out. In this case, for a recent hydropower project in Panama, in Central America, near the border with Costa Rica. The direction of the flow is from right to left. Upstream is the first dam, where a portion of the discharge is diverted along a tunnel 5 kilometers length to the powerhouse. Right in this place, a second dam diverts the same portion of the natural discharge all along a larger tunnel 20 kilometers length to the second powerhouse. So there are 25 kilometers of river where the discharge will be less than the natural and therefore the minimum flow had to be determined. Our research group was hired for the company to carry out this study. In order to represent the natural river variability we defined four segments with relatively uniform characteristics. For the purpose of modeling, each segment is represented by a much shorter length called representative reach around 200-300 meters length. Within a reach, a group of cross sections using red lines are located in order to capture the diversity of the existing aquatic habitats. There are four basic river habitat types that normally conform a pattern like in the figure room, pool, glide and riffle. Riffle is the fastest area, pool is the slowest and glide and run and are intermediate. Glide is formed upstream the riffle and round downstream the riffle. Each cross section is surveyed in terms of topography, which is called bathymetry since it is underneath water velocities and water level and also bed material to evaluate the hydraulics resistance 
and the cover component of the habitat. A couple of pictures during a topographic survey. It is usually done in accessible areas, but sometimes it has to be done in complicated places, such as in this canyon that had to be accessed by rappelling. This is the velocity measurement. The picture from top right is performed manually with this equipment called corimeter. And in the picture below it's done automatically with a remote control boat which is called Acoustic Doppler Current Profile, ADCP. Basis, basis on this data, hydraulic simulation of depth and velocity is carried out for different discharges within the range of median to low flows within the range that concerns the minimum ecologic flow. Then we do this following simple water balance. The incoming discharge is split in two parts here in the intake. The greater in red uh, arrow is diverted towards the turbines and the rest in green line remains downstream as ecologic flow. So different hydrological regimes are evaluated in the in-stream flow study depending on the particular minimum flow which was considered. Biology is a key point of this stuff so a hydrobiological survey is done in order to set the target organisms for the study. Usually these are fish and macroinvertebrates but can be also periphyton mammals like the otter, tropical otter or other species depending on the particular study area. For each of the target organisms, habitat preference criteria are set in terms of depth, velocity and substrate, which are the standard parameters. The range of preference for each variable is between 0, that is unusable, and 1, that is the optimum habitat quality. These pictures were taken during the suitability criteria field sampling. Above, the fish are being observed by snorkeling bottom left is the mark used to locate the points where fish were found a piece of tape and a metal ring and finally bottom right an operator is measuring the hydraulic variables at the market points normally depth velocity and substrate the main core of IFIM is the habitat model that is termed Physical Habitat Simulation System or the acronym PHAVSIM. This is a plan view of a river ridge. The direction of the flow is from left to right. The topography is color code in blue, the deepest area in this pool, and in red, the shallowest areas at both shores. The river is simplified first by a group of several cross sections. In this figure there are only a few for clarity and 
secondly each section is divided in a number of small cells which are more similar in size to the target organisms to understand this you can imagine for instance that the corridor in your house was the river channel and the floor with tiles was the bed of the river. What we are going to do is simulate the basic variables that determine the quantity and quality of the aquatic habitat, depth velocity and bed material at least. On the left the hydraulic simulation in the cross sections calculates depth, velocity and substrate for each cell. Here in the picture is in blue. These values are combined on the right to uh, biological preference functions in order to evaluate the area of the river that is usable for an organism during a particular, particular discharge, this green point. And this is done for every target species that correspond to different uh, colors of the function. The standard habitat index is the weighted usable area, BUA, which conceptually is actually a global suitability of the reach weighted by the area. These screenshots are detailed simulations of microhabitat, spatially distributed throughout the reach for three target organisms from left to right adult fish is a tropical trout called lisa juvenile trout and macro invertebrates here we see the same time of outcome on the left is a three-dimensional view and on the right in two dimensions mode. Discretize in rectangular cells. We will get these types of outputs with the perhaps in software in the next uh, labs. BUA is calculated by adding the area of all usable cells throughout the reach. A main outcome of an IFIM application are these well-known curves that relate discharge to usable habitat area. These BUA discharge functional relationships are interpreted in an IFIM study to quantify the effect of a flow reduction or flow change in the habitat availability. That's the end of this lecture. Thanks a lot for your time.